last week on PJ Truck. Dude, this color looks way better outside. So we're gonna back her in the shop right now. Alright, what's up PJ Truck here? We're back here with a little update. So we got the front basically done. We actually tricked you. We're not lifting the leader. We're gonna leave it just like that. <laughs> we're gonna take some leaves out, remove the block. Realistically, we got the front together. Um, I timed everything. The shots gotta go in, dual steering stabilizers. Uh, PJ's gotta bring the wheels. Uh, PJ's gotta grab the leaves. And we're about to throw the rear end together. The leaves, the blocks, the U-bolts, the shocks. The truck is on its own weight. We got all the rear done. We got the leaves on, we got the shocks on. Hitch receiver, we got the shocks on the front on. The truck's on its own weight. Dude, we're ready to roll this thing out of here. Just gotta adjust the drag link. Gotta put on dual steering stabilizers. Rear brake lines are on, everything's done. Um, we gotta bleed the brakes before we pull it out, that's it. Dude, check out, check out the white and green contrast. Dude, there's been a lot of talk about it in the shop. Maybe we just leave this thing as a mud truck, huh? Dog's coming on tomorrow, man. So, we we'll head for that. Let's, we're gonna take this thing out, fix the drag link. I'm gonna throw on the steering stabilizer, huh? Dude, I can't wait to have the rock lights on this thing. Wow. Oh, oh shit. Dude, I think, think everybody should rock that. Uh, Chris PJ truck is luck Need stabilizers. Bigger leaves always make the, make these trucks ride stiff from the rear. Feels good. I can't see nothing. All right, guys. Today is a huge day at the shop. We got the wheels in the shop now. They're mounted. I'm gonna pull them out now in a minute. We're gonna throw the two-inch shifted industry spacers on. Throw the stabilizers on, dude. This thing will be ready to go. Other than paint match and getting the interior back together, but as far as rolling and lift wise, will be complete. We're getting the space shoot, but we gotta do some trimming right now, but... Hey, here we Yo, go. I wanna pay. I wanna get paid for this shit. You're getting hey, paid a lot of money, man. I'm on, um... <laughs> I'm on strike from PJ Truck. Oh, no, no, dude! I'm on strike. Dude, dude that's messed up, man. I'm on strike. Alright, unpopular opinion, but it's my opinion. Just like PJ's gonna roast me about the Furies. We like running shifted spacers. This is instead of their 2-inch. I don't know what the deal is, but they're the best in the business, truck-wise. It's the only people we use. If you see, like, a lot of big Instagram guys, they're only running shifted spacers, so that's something to say with it. And they're probably running Fury tires, so screw PJ. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> oh, man. But, dude, are these hub centric? Or? But real quick, these are lug centric, two inch shifted spacers. So if you guys need a set of spacers, hit me up, hit Nick Hollinger at Sofla Retros up, hit up PJ, hit up two inch lug centric, um, 8x180 spacers. All they do is space out your wheel. Um, just so you guys know, because a lot of people don't know. You have to trim studs on two inch spacers. Only yeah. two inch spacers. Only two. One and a half, you're gonna have to cut your stud. Don't recommend. Don't do anything shorter than a two inch on F250. Um, I do know like on 1500s, uh, the studs are shorter and stuff like on Chevys and F150s, but on specifically F250, on F250s, on two inch, you have to trim the studs. You don't have to cut them, cut them. There's a small nipple on it. It's literally like a fingernail or two. You have to trim, otherwise it will poke the back side of your wheels and I could tell because sometimes it will leave a notch in the middle of the wheel just saying so if you're that guy I pull <laughs> off your wheels and your spacers aren't your your studs aren't cut you're just you're just not doing it right overall order three inch spacers huh be a be a gangster yeah if you guys want to pay like 1200 bucks for hubs you guys need hubs on your Chevy GM trucks mm -hmm. F-150s F-250s also message me you guys buy spacers I'll sell you spacers and brand new hubs <laughs> Alright. Alright. Alright, we're gonna give you guys a little oh, we're gonna give you guys a little bit of a review on the wheel and tire setup. Alright, all right, first so of all, they're of, not furious. Oh oh. Alright, this is the <laughs> setting. <laughs> like if you guys have been following the channel a long time ago, you remember we made a long drive to Tampa to film a truck of the week and on the way we picked up a set of wheels behind me. We got a set of 24 by 14 American forces. 
that we picked up in Tampa. They're powder coated matte black. Turtle Trail Grappler, 40, 15, 50 on 24s. Um, Nitto's about the best tire you could buy. That's why they cost so much. They even, they balance out really good as well too. They balance good. And dude, maybe we shouldn't sell this out of the way. So he mounted from the 40s that were on there before and mounted all in one day, actually in one hour to be exact. <laughs> Saving you guys about 30 minutes of the process here. If you see on the rears, 2011 to 2016 yeah, for sure. We're not sure about the 17 and 19. Joseph over here says different, but I don't know. I've never seen it done. Only the fronts have to be cut. Just a little bit. When you run two inch or shorter, two and a half, three inch spacers, you're good. But only the rear, you don't have to cut. The rear, you don't have to cut because 11 to it doesn't. the stud doesn't stick out past the spacer. If it does, it pushes on the wheel and the wheel comes loose and you'll lose your wheel. All right, guys, the wheels are on. Dude, absolutely completed the whole build. Looks sick. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane, man. The way the black contrasts with the green and the white, dude, absolutely sick. We might have a small problem, though. Bring it, bring it around over here. Bring it around over here. So it's a little close. A little close. We are on two inch spacers, so let's we'll see. If, if it does rub so bad, then maybe we'll take the spacers out. But we're going to take it out for the first time. Take it out. Bro, not even rubbing. Not even rubbing. Clear. All right, yeah. Pulled over if you don't know how fast you're going, huh? <laughs> See everything. One. Go. It turns out it has one and three quarters of a turn. Which, when you're running these big wheels in spacers, sometimes you have to give up a tad. Maybe we could have gone a little bigger on the lift to run the 40s, but we were planning to run 38s from the beginning. So we're going to give up a little bit of turning radius. Dude, if you guys, I don't know, drop in the comments below. What do you guys think about the color combo now that it's all done? There's still a lot more to go, but for right now, dude, we have our powder coated matte black American forces with the star white and then the midnight metallic green. We've done a lot of work to this truck right now. We have to take it on its first drive and we're gonna take it to get the carpet installed. Obviously it's XL, so it has rubber floor mats. We're gonna go get the carpet and all the seats installed, but we're also doing our first drive, so catch you on the flip. They work, they work fine. All right guys, today's a big day. We're gonna get a lot of the truck done today. A big part came in that I've been waiting for from a long time from cutting edge off-road. Let's check out the grill, man. This is a little unboxing. A little, a little unboxing action on PJ Trucking, man. Dude, crazy, bro. Crazy. So the customer wanted it to say Ford and he wanted these extra lines. All this is gonna light up white. And this is the first piece that's powder coated to match the wrap, so let's butt it up against the wrap and see how it looks. You kind of see the two greens, extremely similar. Now, of course, I know you guys are wondering, why is the outer show gray? So unfortunately, this truck was an XL before we built it, and, well, technically still XL, but you can't take apart the shell of that. So we had to get a Lariat shell. The shell is plastic, and you can't wrap or paint plastic. You need to wrap, you first need to do it in high boat primer. So shout out to Cutting Edge Off-Road. They got me the Lariat Grill. 
they coated basically now that it's done in high belt primer tomorrow we're gonna go back to ld wraps and have this wrap up to match as well as this show and a few more parts <laughs> Hi, how y'all doing? Mitch, Ask Monkey Garage. I work with Nick and Joey and everybody. So we're gonna be doing rock light strain horns. Over here we got the rock light, SoFlow Retro Special. Got the 24 cells per rock light. Really good ones. I recommend these for anyone who's trying to do rock lights. Then we got the Horn Blasters Conductor Special. I think it's the 244K is this kit on the train horn or on the Horn Blasters spare tire delete kit and so what we're going to be doing is as a little special treat for this guy we're going to be adding a little air hookup he can use to fill up his tires or whatever whatever it may be so basically that's going to work it's going to tap into here and it's going to be plumbed right out the back out here so that when he, whenever he needs air he's just going to come up under connect it right in it's going to hook right in give him that air he needs for however long he needs it and then once he's done, all he's got to do is pull that collar back, pop it right out, store that uh, store that hose away for another day. And wiring up the grill light to the rock light, so whenever he flips that on, he gets that nice grill light as well. We're also going to be wiring in cab lights as well. We're going to be doing the grill lights connected into the rock lights as well. So whenever he flips that on, he gets that very nice grill light as well. Just like that, we got the wires all ran, all the rock lights mounted, drain horns mounted. Got everything sitting on that point right down there, running out that Milwaukee battery for now. Say, that's pretty good. These rock lights, I install these quite often, so I know how good they are. They do pretty good. Next up is I gotta tie those into a switch, tie in my compressor trigger and horn trigger wires into a switch, as well as test out everything by throwing the fuse into this for the train horns. Other than that, I have to wire up the lights or make the wiring for the lights remember pod lights two of them one on each side of the bumper here and on the other side also going to tie into here i need to throw in the grill light wires in with the rock lights and then from there i think i'll be done for tonight Customer is about to see the truck.